What's up guys, good morning. Welcome back to Seize This Speed and today, I'm gonna tell y'all why is everybody wrong about the new Corvette, the new 2020 mid-engine dreaded Corvette. Unlike my other why is everyone wrong video, I'm not only going to be focusing on the negatives of this vehicle since I'm kind of head over heels in love with this vehicle. But I'll tell you why is everyone in love with it for the wrong reasons. So first off, since the beginning of Corvette times, even since the six cylinder C1 Corvette, we've had the engine on the front axle, on the front of the car. Maybe some of them, they tried to push it back towards the middle a little bit, call it a mid engine, but all Corvettes have had an engine in front of the driver. And this is kind of gonna piss off a lot of uh, baby boomer Corvette guys. Just like the not round taillights did on the C, uh, C7 Corvette. But as always, the car is geared more towards drivers, new customers, people to come to the brand that want a supercar experience for the lower price. So you take it as you may. I don't know if that's a negative or a positive. I personally think, Cor uh, well, Chevrolet should have, I don't know, maybe call it a Corvair because those are rear engine or I don't know, something else. And they came up with it in a supercar category. That would also be cool. But because of another positive point I want to make later, I don't mind this. Second point. The car is amazing. It's a driver's car. It's a real man's car. Basically, it's a it's the common man's car, but no manual. Which in this day and age, why are we out of focus? Oh my God! There we go. As I was saying, in this day and age, a manual car is pretty rare to find. But we expected it from GM. We expected it from General Motors to give us another manual Corvette because they uh, make pretty good driver's cars. They don't have to make, um, you know, a manual Corvette, a manual ZR1 per se. They could have totally made that auto only, but they didn't. So I guess that's a end of an era that way also with no manual anymore and the engine in the middle. Now, before I get to my next point, I'm gonna be talking about some specs with y'all. So that the new Corvette, as uh, they said in the ceremony, it's a good old naturally aspirated V8 uh, because nothing can change the responsiveness and the sound of just a naturally aspirated V8, a small block. So I appreciate it. That sounds that sounds amazing. That sounds like it's gonna be sounding good, but it also sounds like they just revised the LT1 and made the LT2 since uh, the jump is barely about 30 40 horsepowers up to 495 horsepowers for the stingray which makes it a the most powerful stingray but by a small margin and also the car is gonna have an 8-speed dual clutch transmission and we've been promised now here hear me out this is where everybody's uh, wrong about this car and was wrong about this car and this car knocked it out of the park it's going to be doing 0 to 60 under 3 seconds which is insane and um, another thing is the fact and this is the biggest positive about this car that won me over with it is that the CEO of GM said they're not ready to announce the full pricing details on this vehicle but what they can tell us is the base price of this vehicle is going to be under $60,000. Everyone thought this car is going to be in the 80s, 90s. Everyone thought Corvette is not going to be the attainable supercar anymore. Well, here we go. It is a supercar and they're keeping the base price around where the C7 was, which is amazing. This is uh, insane work by GM. Hats off to them. Um, that's just I don't know how they make it possible but we got a dual clutch we got a rear engine we got a V8 in a car we got 0 to 60 under 3 seconds we got looks blah, front to side 
view very well designed kind of reminds me of a Ferrari like 430 360 style Ferraris but um yeah that's the next negative I was gonna get to the rear end but all that together and you can probably do stuff to the rear end to make it look better or in person who knows it looks amazing um, you have a bargain of a supercar for less than sixty thousand dollars which is unheard of in this day and age with everyone just jumping prices with each generation calling it adjustment for inflation which I don't understand how that may be the case when the new model came out two years after the first one on certain models now another thing people tend to bash on GM engineers for is the fact is the design of the car all in whole and the uh, same thing happened sorry I'm talking like this I was just trying to back up and not hit that car and the same thing happened with the C7 and uh, the big issue everybody is pointing out is the fact they want to say the car has identity crisis and uh, they want to say well it's a piece of Ferrari here and there it's rear end is kind of Camaro new blazer-ish and um, you know the looks just aren't quite there well same thing was said about the C7 and I think everyone's over it everyone was over it by the first year seeing all those cars in person and um, what GM had in store but if you look at the heritage these cars need to look killer and uh, for a low price so no pin and frena designs here these are designed in-house by GM and they need to look fabulous and they they take notes they listen and that's what they did they made a car that looks like a freaking supercar and it's not easy to make a front engine car still hold heritage and have the engine in the rear now that's insane so I give them props for that I think the car in person would look beautiful I don't have any you know I don't have any complaints about the looks as much as everyone likes to bash on the car and the last point I'd like to make is is back to the whole why did they make a Corvette a mid-engine car and not uh, just keep the Corvette what it was but make it make the new platform with the mid-engine and new vehicle call it something else at a higher price range or even the same price range just have a mid-engine sports car and um, well that brings me to another point this is something not GM only is guilty of but GM has been guilty of it and um, uh, if you go look at one of my recent reviews I'll put the link up here on the new Chevy Blazer I mean the Blazer isn't anything like what it used to be the you know people have the same complaint about that car it's a front to all-wheel drive front oriented all-wheel drive SUV slash mom car with no V8 in it, only V6, outdated, very outdated V6 that GM's been putting on, basically, my 2010 Camaro had it, I think, 08, um, uh, they started using it in 07 or 08, and now they came out with a new platform and they're putting it in that, and that's the RS, or you can get the Turbo 4 with it, well, same, same issue with that, off-road guys, people who are and love it big old trucks are very disappointed because this was an opportunity to just make a two-door Tahoe which everyone would love to own me for, as speaking for myself I love two-door SUV so sorry wrong video but I had to rant a little bit give us a nice Bronco please don't mess this up give us something Give us a chopped up Tahoe, okay? That's all we want. Anyhow, sorry I rambled. 
this is something everyone's doing with these new cars, bringing out the old names and um, it is it is what it is. We gotta take it. it with the new Supra identity crisis BMW. It is what it is. We can't really change it. We just you gotta think about the fact that it's so hard to compete nowadays, and it gets so expensive for the manufacturer that they have to um, just keep it down to one car. They they couldn't just go and design a front engine one and the mid engine one and then keep that and the other car and it wouldn't make any financial sales sense for these guys so kudos to them for bringing back the Corvette nameplate with a mid engine they finally done it after all those prototypes all the buzz since the 60s here's the first 2020 mid engine Corvette as always if you like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to share with your friends. Comment down below what you think about the new Corvette or anything I discussed during this video. Thank you for tuning in. Please keep tuning in for more content. Have a great day. Peace out. I'm out. Boom.